Hello everybody. Today I've got a 1920 penny. It's quite a common penny this one and has a mintage figure of over 124 million. And all of them have the head side or obverse side called obverse 2. Well, they all have bar 1. One is known in the British Museum to have an obverse 3. And nobody really knows why. So what we're going to do in this video is show you the difference between obverse 2 and obverse 3 and you never know there may be another one out there ultra rare coin so what i'm going to do is try and show you the difference between obverse 2 and obverse 3 and this is going to be difficult so please subscribe if you haven't already i really appreciate that now the way i familiarized myself with the difference between a type 2 and type 3 obverse was to look through my 1921 pennies over 129 million were minted, around 40% had obverse 2 and about 60% obverse 3. Now I appreciate that not everyone's got this many 1921 pennies, but even if you've got a few, you may have the different obverses. So let's stick them under the microscope and show you what you're looking for. I'll quickly show you this first. There we are, I've sorted them out. Type 2 and type 3 and that's about the ratio you'd expect. So there we are under the microscope. This is obverse 2. And if you look between the words gra and brit, you'll see a colon. And the gaps between the A and the colon and the colon on the B are quite small. Now, let me bring in an obverse 3. Slide it up from the bottom. And there you can see the gaps between the A and the colon and the colon on the B are much bigger. Honestly, they are. It's subtle. It took me a while to see the difference. So what we need to do is put them both together. There we go. Just zoom in a little bit. I've got to do it really slow on this microscope. I don't want to nudge anything. Okay, if you look at the top one and the bottom one and keep looking, top, bottom, top, bottom, you can see the gaps are bigger at the bottom one, the type 3 or the obverse 3. Let me put some lines in and you can see the difference. It's almost double. I find looking the colon and the B easier because you can see there, if I flash those lines, you can see almost double, double the distance between them from the obverse 2 and the obverse 3. Yeah, just keep looking between one and the other and you can see the difference. It's much easier if you've got the coins and a magnifying glass, you can see it. See it in reality rather than looking at these images. Another way of telling if you've got an obverse 2 or an obverse 3 is to go to the bottom of the coin and look at the colon after the word imp. Here we are, back under the microscope. The top coin, which is the obverse 2, and you can see the colon there. If you draw a line straight through the dots of the colon, follow it down, the line will go between the teeth, or between the beads of the coin. On the bottom coin, which is the obverse 3, if you draw a line between the two dots again of the colon, the line will go directly through the tooth of the coin, through the bead. Very hard to see, I know, but it is a way of telling. Here's a pile of my 1920 pennies, all sadly of verse 2. Then we come on to 1921 and they continued to be minted with of verse 2 until part way through the year uh, they changed to of verse 3. Now whether that was because the dies were wearing out or whether it was to combat ghosting. And if you don't know what ghosting is, I'll show you on this one here. Okay, there's the king's head and if you turn it over you can still see the king's head from the other side, from the reverse troubled the Royal Mint through the early stages of George V coins as they couldn't really get it sorted out properly. So maybe that's why they changed the die again. So how come the British Museum have got a 1920 penny with an obverse 3 and it's the only one known to exist? Do we need this guy to do a bit of investigating for us? Okay, let's do a bit of investigating ourselves. This is the British Museum website. Uh, you can search their stuff. So coins, Come down here, penny, denomination penny, uh, production date down there, 1920. So that's just the date on the coin. But if we come down a little bit further, where is it? Uh, yeah, we go acquisition date, 1921. So they probably didn't get the coin until 1921. Um, what else does it say there? It's uh, not on display. There, look. 
So can I go and see it? Can I go to the British Museum and say, can I see your 1921 penny, please? And have a fondle of it. I wear gloves. I don't know if you can do that or not. The British Museum acquired one of each of new coins that were minted. Whether they still do that now with all the coins that are not intended for circulation, I don't know. So what do I think happened? Well, other people think this as well. I think the Royal Mint sent the British Museum a 1921 penny. They were putting it in their stock or wherever they keep them in their storeroom and they noticed they either didn't have or had a bad quality 1920 penny. And they said to the Royal Mint, could you send us another one, please? Now, probably the Royal Mint didn't have a good enough one to send them, so they minted another one. And by this time, they would be using obverse 3. So the British Museum have a penny dated 1920, but was minted in 1921. So if they minted just one, why do I keep looking for them? Well, did they mint just one? I mean, would you? Would you set all, everything up just to mint one solitary coin, or would you mint several and send the British Museum the best one. That's what I'd do. So what happened to the others? Did they throw them into the hopper with the 1921s that they were minting at the time? And maybe they'll turn up, maybe I'll find one. Dreamer, you know you are a dreamer. Yeah, maybe I'm dreaming, but let's have a look at this. This is the Bronze Coinage of Great Britain by Michael J. Freeman. Uh, I'm not sponsored by the way, but every coin collector should have that. Uh, we have a look at catalogue number 189. So. Obverse 3, uh, Reverse B, they're all Reverse B that we're looking at today, so that doesn't affect anything. But Obverse 3 is a crucial one from 1920 penny. And the rarity is R19, the estimated rarity. Now R20 would be believed unique, but R19, the god of coins, Michael J. Freeman, thinks there could be two to five out there somewhere. And I agree. And the reason no other ones have turned up yet, as you've just seen, it's so difficult to spot. If you find an obverse three penny dated 1920 and it's genuine, how much would you get for it? Well, I would say thousands. I would say 10,000 pound plus. The British penny is a highly collected coin. There are so many completionists out there who would love to get their hands on it. The demand would be astronomical. Well, there we are. I'll do some more videos like this. So please subscribe so you don't miss any and click that like button for me. Click that thumbs up. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next one.